Hi, this is Dennis Gage. Thanks for tuning into My Classic Car, home of the Certified Car Nut. Well, this week we're in Alexander City, Alabama, at the home of Tim and Pam Wellborn to view one of the most amazing Mopar collections on Earth. Now, it's one thing to have stunningly beautiful cars, but with this collection, the environment they're displayed in is equally as important. Check this out. Hey, Tim. Good to hey, see you again, man. Good to see you. It's been a few years. <laughs> man, I got to say, nice place you got here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really, I mean, you have beautiful cars and everything, but I've never seen them displayed in such a beautiful surrounding. What a building. Well, it, 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 you can have beautiful cars, and you can put them in a plain building, and it just, something happens. But, you, but if you put them in a nice building, everything just looks a lot prettier. And, uh, and it so, does look pretty. And we, does. we spend a little time down here admiring them. I bet you Having do. a glass of wine. I think I could do that, too. Yeah. <laughs> we <laughs> well, might do that after. We might just do that. <laughs> well, you know, we're standing amid three 71 Hemi chargers. That alone is amazing, but it doesn't stop at three. You've got a bunch of 70, you're a 71 yeah, guy. I am. It, uh, it, I have 23 of them with Hemi engines in them. And, <laughs> all 71? Uh, all 71 Chargers. And, and we have a collection of about 40 cars, Hemi and, and a lot of other things too. But of the 71 Charger, 23 of them. It all started with my father. Uh, 1971, he went out and checked off a brand new Charger RT, uh, butterscotch in color, and yeah. uh, ordered it. And I was a kid. And you know, at that time, you, you just it just was the greatest car ever, you know, because I, I couldn't drive it, but I could sure wash it and detail it and sit in it and listen to WLS in Chicago. Larry Lujak, yeah. WLS, I remember it well. So, so it, just, it just started a love for the cars that I never got out of, and as I got older and could afford a car, then I bought a Charger. That's uh -huh. what I got. And it went on from there. But my dad never let me have the Charger RT. <laughs> you know? he, he knew better. But, uh, well, let's talk about some of these Charger RTs okay. here. This one over here was the, what caught my eye as soon as I came in. I mm -hmm. mean. It's, it's screaming orange color, but I think it's that white top and the sunroof. I, I, I yeah. never saw that before. That particular car is one of the most loaded chargers. It's probably the creme de la creme of, of chargers. It has everything that could be checked on the option box. And, uh, the, it's got to be a long window sticker. Oh, it is. It has two window stickers. It's, it's, that long. it's, it's a full page and a half page. And uh, the car cost actually about $6,400, yeah, which was a lot, a lot of money. Of money. In 71. And, uh, but it has everything, power windows, headlight time delay, six-way seat, rim blow, Painted bumper package, uh, uh, the list really goes on, but the biggest thing is is that sunroof. There was only 30 chargers, and that's not counting RTs. There was only one RT with a Hemi in it built in 1971. And, and this that's is it. it. And uh, that's right. Wow. So, well, now, it looks like the sister car is right over here. I mean, uh, you have a, a, a match set almost? Yeah. There's a, a, not too long ago, a little gentleman called me up in Dallas, Texas, said he had one of these. And I didn't know whether to believe it or not, but he sent out some pictures. He really he had He really one. did. <laughs> and so I was right out there on the next flight. And yes, it's a sister car. It, it, it's a four-speed, which makes this one uh, unique in its way. Yeah, yeah. Even though the color combination is the same, you got a black top. And a, and a four speed, and, and the four speed's a fun car to drive. Oh, no well, and the pistol grip, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah it's what, one of the Nothing says Mopar like the, like like the pistol, pistol grip. Pistol grip. But, uh, but if you look at this car here, it's just a, it's just a 9,000 mile survivor. It that is. It's just uh, never been, I mean, if you look at the little Department of Safety window sticker in it, it's 1971. It's never faded. This car just has not seen any sunlight. How do you do that? How do you take a car like this that just screams to be driven and, and, and you know, have the restraint to not drive it? Well, out? actually, I do get it out and drive it. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> the, uh, every car I have, I, I, I'll actually drive. They all have insurance on them. I'll have okay. tags on them. And, Boy, I respect and, that. And they're just more fun to drive. Nothing will get a smile on my face quicker than one of these things when you open up both four barrels on oh. it. So and, and, the, and the people that see it. I mean, you talk about putting smiles on other people's mm -hmm. faces. These cars do oh, it. Yeah. Now, this paint always, uh, this orange just really, really pops. Yeah, it's, it's one of the more unique colors. It's, it's actually an orange color solid color, but then they put a, it's, it's mixed with gold metal flake and it's called Hemi Orange and that's what makes the color just pop in the sunlight is that gold fine metal flake. It Most must people be, don't know it's a metal well, flake. I didn't know it. It must be really a, t a really it tiny is. flake. It's, it's a fine, fine oh, piece. It makes it look fine yeah, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but just for a change of pace and maybe a change of color, this is a wild machine. Yeah, this, here you go with another one of the crazy colors from, from Chrysler back then. They, they really had them. They had, this is a gringo is what it's called and, uh, and also it's called Sassy Grass in Plymouth. Uh -huh. 
but again, just a loud color that then, and basically what they took was some of the, it appears that they took one of the louder colors from 1970, put black in the paint, and it's, it's toned it down, yeah. and gave it a rich look. And, uh, well, in 70, it was, uh, it was uh, sublime and limelight, but and, mm -hmm. at first I thought that's what this is, but you're right, no, it's a it's, different it's, tone. It's a darker tint. Tone. And with, then with the black, trim oh it, it brings it out yes it, it does not and this it, is another one of my favorites here this is a 30,000 mile survivor and it's just it's the survivor cars are so fun you get in them you can't restore a car like a survivor it's it got can, that tight factory feel yeah it can uh, never it can only be original once that's right that's and, right and boy, and this oh. happens to be one of them so we're amongst three of, of my favorites uh, but there are times when I get in the others and they're my favorites <laughs> <laughs> favorites the last one you got yeah. out of right well yeah, yeah. now I know you're a 71 guy, but mm -hmm. you got some other things in here that are pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. you got a, a 69 Charger Daytona well, over there. I went over there with a Hemi in it. Well, say we uh, go check that baby out, too. All right. Sounds All right. Good. Let's do it. Welcome back to My Classic Car and Tim Wellborn's Wonderful World of Mopars. Well, there it is. The 69 Charger Daytona. The most radical production car ever built. There's absolutely no doubt. This thing here, when it came out of the factory, everybody knew it had arrived. <laughs> and it was built for one thing? Racing. Racing. Yeah, <laughs> and race it did. These things were the winningest car in NASCAR. Yeah, they were. They did it too well. They, they got outlawed after one year. <laughs> but uh, very first car to go through the 200 mile an hour barrier. That, that's another uh, statement that it'll always make. The color, I've never seen this color on it. And I love the interior combo with it. It's, yeah, it's just very unique. It's called T5 Copper. and it's it, with that interior and the wide wing, it really does give a tasteful look to the Daytona. I'll say. Now, this also has a bit of a pedigree, doesn't it? This one does. This one came out of the Otis Chandler collection. It was one of his favorite cars, from what I understand. It's a 6,000-mile car that he actually sent to a friend of mine, Roger Gibson, out in Missouri. And Roger restored the, uh, basically a brand-new car. So that's, that was almost 20 years ago. When you still this is a 20-year-old restoration? This is a 20-year-old Roger Gibson restoration. Looks and like it came out last month. That's it, it, just the way he does work. And that's why Chandler chose to, to uh, go to him. This is very special. I mean, this is kind of the holy grail of Daytonas, isn't it? And you're looking at it. Yeah. <laughs> this one right here. When it comes to the, the Charger Daytona, all of them that exist, pretty much everybody will agree this is the, the car with the best pedigree. Well, now, <laughs> I mean, we got to look at the engine in this car. I mean, well, if we're going to look at the engine of a car, it needs to be this, this, was, this Hemi this Daytona. This is a good one to look at right here. <laughs> well, open her up. And let's see what's under here. But. Um, Wow. When it gets down to it, Dennis, this is about as close to a NASCAR race car as you could have gotten. Charger Daytona body, 426 Hemi, and a four-speed. It doesn't get much better for the street. Uh, no, it really, it really Basically, doesn't. you put a roll cage in this thing, and you were out <laughs> on the racetrack on Sunday afternoon at 200 miles an hour. And uh, so. And it don't get much better than no, that. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Wow. Well, I tell you, you know, there's still a few cars to go in here. What do you say you close this up and we'll go look at those? All right. We've got some more. Welcome back to My Classic Car. Just to show that you have things other than 71 Chargers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They've got a, got a few other babies here. Now, this, this Hemi Cuda here is kind of where it started yeah, for you, is, right? That, that's right. This particular 71 Hemi Cuda is, is, is definitely goes back to my roots. My father, my brother Curtis, and my, my younger brother Mike, we found this car over in Atlanta, Georgia, and uh, went, purchased it, brought it home. This is one of our older restorations that we did as a family. You guys did it yourself? We did it ourselves. Now, it's, it's a 25, 30-year-old restoration now, but yes, this, is, this one is close to my heart because of my family. So okay. it was, and it was really your, your first Hemi. That's right. Your first, the, the first, you first, owned, right? Yeah, that's right. That's the first Hemi that, uh, that, that I owned. That's one to hang on to. Oh, mm -hmm. it won't be going anywhere. No. Anyway. And the 71 Hemi Cuda is a good one to hang on to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. You know? Well, and, and <laughs> talk about a nice pair. <laughs> this uh, AAR Cuda and uh, Challenger TA. This is great. I love these. Well, they're, they're just some of the coolest Mopars ever built. And this particular group here came from, uh, again, from the Otis Chandler collection out in California, and then went all the way around the world over to England and uh, to Carlos Monteverdi. And, and then I was doing a deal on a couple of 71 Hemi Chargers from him, and he mentioned these, and again, Roger Gibson spoke up, said, buy those cars. And I said, okay, I'll get them in the deal. They're very cool cars, yeah, and, and both of them are very, very original. These are two survivors, and they're pretty much known, again, to be the best of their kind in existence, which, as you've, you've noticed, that's what I like. I love yeah. survivor cars, and 
uh, they, they just, a survivor car speaks for itself. You don't have to ask any questions when you look at it. No, and, and you don't take any guff from anybody either. No. Well, yeah, they didn't do it that way. Oh, yes, yeah. they did. This is one of them. <laughs> and if you look at this one, you'll actually see some of the sloppiness of how Chrysler built things. Yeah, uh, you know, well, you see the, 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 the waves in the fiberglass here, and you can see where it's laid up, but it was acceptable. And in a restored car, you'd never no, see that. Oh, that would be so but buffed out and everything. Mm -hmm. And even the, like the fitment on your, your louvers. Yeah. Yes, on the tail, you can see under them because they don't fit down just right. And, uh, and, and, and not a lot of cars had the louvers from the factory. This is one of the most optioned AARs you will, you will ever find. It has the four-speed AM8 track louvers. It just has got all the goodies on it. And most of the time, they were more bare bones. Mm -hmm. And uh, but this one here, somebody was pizzazzing it up with, the, with all of it. About how many miles? I think this one here is around 21 or 2,000. Man. And, so. it, it's, and they're, like we said, they're only original ones. That's right. They only happen one time that way. Welcome back to My Classic Car. Well, enough looking, it's time for some driving. First to second, that torque flight transmission, boom, boom. The, the pistol grip four speed, we have a couple of those, you saw them already. They are beautiful to look at, they're sexy, but, but if you this, want to race, this is you, this is what you go racing. You get your torque flight tricked out, and it's the way to go. Well, never before and never since has there been an automatic like that. No, I think it was probably one of the best automatics built. This car here has had one repaint in its life, and other than that, it is a uh, it's a survivor car with uh, thirty-five thousand miles. That's right. I and most collectors will prefer any day of the week a survivor car. It just feels different. It drives different. It it's does. just the way it really was back then. But back then, and that's how you could get cars like this. You could just keep checking option boxes. That's right. Well, the, the beauty of the of the '71 Charger, and even Chargers before that, but especially the '71 year, lots of options. Theoretically, there are no two chargers probably identical when it comes to engine colors. You you really personalized your car back then. Any way you wanted Any it. Any way you wanted it. If you were on the street, your car had your look if you sat down with the order it box. Was, it was your car. It was your car. So, uh, Tim, could I put my foot in it just a little? I don't have a problem at all. You want to see what a Hemi feels like? Go for it. Okay, if, if you insist. Oh. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Yeehaw! You just didn't stay in it long enough, Dennis. You just got to go a little longer to really tell what we can do. Yeah, here. well, I, I, I could feel that. It was coming on. It was coming on. <laughs> Oh man, what a day. This is one of the most unbelievable collections of Mopars I've ever seen. 20, 23 Chargers? 23. 23 71 Chargers, most of them Hemis. Oh, and speaking of Hemis, 